start on Ksuba Staff Nun. It's page 50, 58. And we'll start three lines from the top. Amar Rabbi La. We thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. It's less of our learning. We should have based on Migdash immediately. Is that correct? Amar Rabbi La. Okay. So Rabbi La has a statement. Rabbi La was an Amaira in Eretz Yisrael. A lot of times he tells us um, what Allah was in Eretz Yisrael. It's spelt, I think, the same as Rabbi Hud Rabbi La. Rabbi Hud Rabbi Lai. Rabbi Lai would have a yod at the end. But um, that was a Tana, which is an Amaira. He says, but Usha Eskino. When the Sanhedrin was in Usha, they instituted that Hamavazvez, Al Yavazvez, Yesu Mikhaimish, when someone is giving tzedakah, he's um, spreading out his uh, wealth. He shouldn't spread out. He shouldn't, um, he shouldn't, Vazvez uh, sounds like waste. Yeah, so but, yeah. He shouldn't give more than, um, more than a fifth, 20%. That's what, what, the, what they instituted there. Tanya Namihachi was also taught in a brisa. The Gilean Ashas, Rabbi Kiveger, quotes Yerushalmi that says that this halacha was before Usha, but apparently they forgot it and then they reinstituted it. That's. Um, it was also taught in a brisa, Mavaz is all Yavaz is Yesu Mechaimish. Someone's uh, um, spreading out his wealth for, for tzedakah, he shouldn't give more than 20%. Shem Yitzdarach Labrius. Maybe he'll end up himself needing tzedakah if he gives so much. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point of tzedakah, is to help people that need, and uh, it shouldn't make himself uh, be, uh, be needy. It's a story that was a person that wanted to give more than a chaymish. His friend didn't let him. Umanu, Rabbi Yeshevav. Who was the friend? Rabbi Yeshevav. Amrila, and there are those that say that Rabbi Yeshevav uh, was the one that wanted to give. Umanu, Rabbi Akiva. Who was the friend that didn't let him? It was Rabbi Akiva. I'm not sure if there's other sources. Um, that Rabbi Sheva was someone that would give all his money to tzedakah. If there's other sources, then that would fit better with the second version. I forget who it was. There was a person that would always give tzedakah. I don't think it was Rabbi Sheva. The, 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 um, the, he would give everything, and the, the, the collectors were, would actually avoid him because he would give so much that it was like it would be taken from his family. Yeah. I'm Rav Nachman. I'm sorry. And the coin it translates as a, a fifth of one's property. Is it property or is it income? Oh, so Taisus, that's a good point. Taisus says over here that Yushalmi says that um, the first time he gives from his property, and after that he gives just from the income. Yeah. So I, I guess the first time. Um, I guess when he in, uh, when he um, let's say he inherits something, you know, so that first time he'll give from that capital money that he inherited, the whole thing is profit. But uh, whatever, and then after that, he doesn't have to give from that money every year. He just whatever money that property brought in, whatever the the income is, on top of that. That's what it sounds like. That's what Tesis quotes this year, show me. Yeah. Okay. Now, Amar Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman says, "Vitema Rav Acha Bar Yaakov." Micra, what's the source for this halacha that you shouldn't give? Person shouldn't give more than than twenty um, percent, than a fifth. He says, "V'chol Hashetitin liyaser asrenala." He says, "Yaakov made a vow." On his way to love on that everything that Hashem gives, he's going to give uh, Maiser. But the expression for Maiser is Aser Asrenu. I will surely give Maiser, right? 
from it. Or give miser from it. Take a, a, a tithe. Well, there's a double expression there. The Gemara says uh, that means two two times uh, miser, which is twenty percent, right? Two ten percent is twenty percent. So it says one second. It's not exactly twenty percent because when you take miser the first time, let's say you have ten pieces, you take away one. You know, now you're only left with nine. So you take miser off nine. It's not twenty percent. You're not left there. Your total isn't twenty percent. There's a one percent there. That's there, that's off, right? Or something like that. So it's not perfect. So I'm a Ravashi Asreno Labasra Kikama. The word I have to look at the words carefully. But Aser Asreno uh, could have said Aser uh, Aser. I will tithe. The ah, 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 se, ah, se, is I will. And the first one is the way the, the, the double words mean to intensify the, uh, right? Um, we'll surely take myself. But because it says, uh, take myself off it, from it, so that's telling me that it's equal to the, to the first one. You know, it doesn't, it's a drasha. It doesn't mean tithe tithe two times uh -huh. it means i will surely tie that's in the chat i will surely tie but in the drusha the double expression is telling me that the two tithes are similar okay uh mara simi barashi simi barashi says these halachas that we're getting from usha are being told to us by rabbi loy rabbi law and each halacha that we have, they're getting less and less by who Rabbi La is quoting it in the name of. So the first one was Amar Rabbi La, Amar Lakish, Mishim Rabbi Huda Bar Chanina. There was that long phrase in the name of Rish Lakish, named Rabbi Huda Bar Chanina, that a person needs to support his um, son and daughter, even though they're, they're even though they're old, over the certain age, but to be but he, he should still support his children. That was the first one. The second one statement was Amr Abilai, Amr Ishlakish, just the name of Ishlakish. And over there it says that if a person gives his children all his wealth, he still, they should still support him. He should live off that property. Now the third statement was a person shouldn't give more than 20% to tzedakah. That's just Amr Abilai. So it's getting less and less who it's being quoted in the name of. So if Simi Barashi says, if you want to remember like where it started and where it ends, Kitanim Kasvu Bizbazu. The first halacha was about Kitanim. The second halacha was if someone writes all his possessions over to his children. And the third halacha was about giving tzedakah. Okay. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak says, Usha Eskino, another institution from Usha. The person should miskalgal sounds like to roll, but it's the way Rashi puts it is that he should be nice to his child until he's 12 years old. It's an expression. He should um, go down to his life. It means after 12, he should beat him. And it's talking about if he doesn't want to study. So first, you should try to convince him. Go study, go study. And afterwards, then you, you start hitting him. That's saying that's what he's supposed to do. Um, how old is this? He's 12 years old. So he's not really, he's not bar mitzvah because there's a problem with hitting a child that, that's over bar mitzvah because he might strike back. You know? um, and then there's a big punishment there. Not because of his strength, but there's, if, uh, if he would hit a, a parent, he would hit him. That's a, that's a very severe. Mm -hmm. Roll with the punches. <laughs> it means to, no, not to force. It means he should be kind. He should uh, encourage, encourage him to, to study. The Gemara says, Aini, is that so? V'amalei rav l'rav shmol barshelas. Shmuel Barshelas was a famous teacher. Gemara talks about his teaching. 
about Basra, I think. Um, Rav says to Shmuel Bar Shela, Spotsumi Bar Shis, late to Kabul. Don't accept the child under six years old. However, Bar Shis, once he's six years old, Kabul Vasafil Katura. Then you should ex- accept him and you should stuff him like an ox. Now they would stuff the ox by force to fatten him up. They would push the food in his mouth. <clears throat> what this sounds like is that even at six years old, you force the child to study. <clears throat> It's not just you encourage. Safala Katura, you force him. The Gemara says, in, you're right. Safala Katura, you force him to learn. But you don't beat him until he's 12 years old. I don't think so. No. Everyone holds studying Torah as their eyesight. I know, but this isn't really chinuch. This is not chinuch. Is chinuch uh, when we discuss chinuch? The rest of the we're talking about um, practice behaviors of performing mitzvahs, not learning. Learning Torah is a deraisa. That's to teach the child Torah, according to everyone. Yeah, that, that's the whole question. So, what all our all our children will be scholars without any practice in of the behaviors? How could that be? So. Okay. Um, what do you mean, Safala Katura? They always told us Safala Katura just means you just teach them a lot, like a lot of hours, a lot of, you know, the full day, even on Shabbos, you just learn and learn and learn. You, you just, um, but it's still saying, but you do it in an encouraging way, not in a force, not in a forceful way. Okay. Another shot. Like Kasha. There's no problem over here if you have to force him or if you uh, uh, if you suffer a katura or if it's just megalgali, miskalgali. So what's uh, why? How was that not a contradiction? It says hala mikra, hala mishna. One is talking about mikra, which that, I think that means Tanakh, or maybe it just means Chomish, I'm not sure. And um also mach like this in Kedushan, but mikra meant. But um or and the other one is talking about Mishnah. Which one is which? Probably the Mikra, he was forced to get it accurate, to make sure that he reviewed enough times. The in the Mishnah, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe the Mishnah was because it wasn't written. Maybe that he had to have, have, have accurate. In the, in the Mikra, it's there anyway. It's written down. Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's the other way. Maybe it's the, the time in, in this. I don't know. I'm sure the, the translators chose one way over the other, but it's Slavdavka. What did they say over there? They say the Mikra is the forcing. The forcing. And the Mishnah is the later. Uh-huh. And the Pirkei also kind of like that too, right? First Mikra and then Mishnah. Yeah, but now yeah. the Gemara is not telling me that there's a difference in age. Now the Gemara is telling me that the difference between the two t- types of teaching is what it's being, what's being taught, the content. Am I forcing or am I not? Yeah. Um, okay. The Omar, and this would go, the Omar Abaya, Abaya says, I'm really aim. My mother told me, it's not really his mother, it's his uh, wet nurse, uh, sorry, the woman that's so raised him. Foster, foster mother. Um, she's common in the, in the Gemara. She has a lot of wise things to say, and Abaya quotes her with, uh, you know, with reverence. It says, Barshis um, Lamikra. Six years old is for Chumash, or Tanakh. Bar Esther is the Mishnah. Ten years old is Mishnah. Bar Tleisar the Tanisa Meisleis from twelve. From ten years old is Mishnah. From twelve years old is to fast. Uh, Yom Kippur twenty four hours. But Tinaikus Bas Tracer, and a girl is from 
Did I say 12? No, uh, 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 the boy is 13 and the girl is 12. Now it turns out that the boy is not really 13. The boy is really 12. He's going on to going into 13. And the girl is 11 going into 12. Because once at 12, I don't need uh, Abaya's uh, foster mother to tell it to, to tell this to me, right? Uh, it would be in the Torah. The, the, what I'm getting from this foster mother is that um, you practice the, the tainus a year earlier. Yeah. Now, Barshis probably means um, five years old. Ben Chamesh, right? And for some reason, the Gemara uses a different... The numbering of the ages is different possibly in the Mishnah than in the Gemara because the Mishnah says Ben Chamesh the Mikra. And then the Gemara says Barshis. So you have to know like which one is which. Because the Mishnah says from 18 to Chuppah. And the Rambam writes 17. And it's because the Rambam's understanding that the Mishnah means 18 means the, it means 18th year. Yeah. So what is Bar, what is Shalish Yasrila Mitzvah? Does that mean the 12th year? That's, that would be uh, strange. I, I don't believe the Rambam has the last Mishnah in the fifth parak of Perk I, I think the Rambam doesn't have that Mishnah. At least his commentary, he, he doesn't have any comment on that. I think his last Mishnah is uh, the Mishnah before that, I forget what it is. From Tzara Agra, I forget. I forget what the Mishnah is. But, um, okay, well, we have it in, the, in this Gemara. If, if that's the case, then this Gemara is significant. Abai is telling me what it says in the Mishnah from his, from his foster mother. I need this, but maybe that Mishnah wasn't really part of the Mishnah. Omar Abaya. Abaya says, I'm really aim. My foster mother told me, Hi, Barshis, the six year old child, which I guess we say is five, the Tarkale Akrava, he gets bitten by a scorpion. the Mishlam Shis on the day of his, uh, when he completes his six. Sixth year. Lechai won't survive. Oh, okay. So the sixth year would mean that when, yeah, five years old. I think they start Chumash uh, in first grade. And usually, which means they're five years old. First grade is five. Is that true? No, because second grade is seven. First grade is six. First grade is six. Kindergarten is yeah. five. They learn uh, yeah. most personal. So they're not doing it accurate. And then they're doing Chumash a year late. And then, um, no, they usually, they'll start. They, traditionally, they started with Bayikra. But uh, the schools today start with Voracious. They start with... Uh, then um, they start Mishnayas in either third or fourth grade. Now, third grade would be eight years old. That doesn't fit with anything. And uh, fourth grade is nine years old, which would fit with the 10. If you say that then, uh, 10 years to Mishnah really means nine, so it would fit with fourth grade. Also, I think the expectation was that they were going to spend five years studying Tanakh. And it would just be memorization of the Tanakh, of reading and reading and reading and reciting, you know, recite. The children like to recite. And that's the, they learn very well. They remember. Okay. Um, if he gets bit by a scorpion, scorpion, he, he won't survive. Maya Sutta, what is the remedy? Mirarta the Daya Chivarta. You take the, the Mara, the gall, or the bile. Of the um, of a white vulture, a daya chivarta, b'shichra. You put it with a uh, beer, nashve. You rub it on him, the nashke, and you give it to him to drink. So we're talking about feeding this to a six-year-old. Now I, it's unclear if what it means is after he gets bitten, which the gemara said that he won't survive. So you feed it to him, and then he, the gemara says that he will survive. Or does it mean you have to give it to him before so he won't get bitten? It would be like yeah, a, the, uh, the, the a moment, in the what? In the heat of the in moment. The of the moment. <laughs> right. To go to the zoo. Hai Barshata, this one year old, the Tarakle Zibura, 
that gets uh, stung by a wasp. Uh, on his on his the day of the first year's birthday, he won't survive. Maya Suta. So what's the what's the remedy? Atzva said the dikla b'maya, the fibers of the um, of the palm tree. You mix it with water. Nashve, you rub it on him and ask you and you give it to him to drink. Also, that could be either after or before. I don't know. It came in because Abaya's mo uh, mother, foster mother, was telling us about um, how to treat the uh, the child. Um, which came in because in Usha, they instituted something uh, to be nice to the child. And Usha came in because we had other statements from Usha that we're talking about feeding the children, right? So it's... Yeah, well, it's because it was, a, it was coming from Usha. And Usha was, was the decrees about uh, feeding the children, which that was significant. Because we're talking about the father and the husband feeding the child and all that. Okay. I've never heard of a hornet sting being fatal. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like many stings. <laughs> Avram Nassim says because we have hundreds of years of rubbing uh, um, the tree fibers. Palm, uh, so it's protected us. Yeah, could be African. Uh, what's it called? African bees or something. You know, there's. But here it sounds like it's just one stink. Right? Here it talks about a sting of a scorpion on a horn. Right. And it says the middle of scorpion and headaches is zero. Oh, okay. And what about the hornet? Is that a uh, is this a hornet that's, that has a deadly sting? No, it just, it just talks about like if the younger the child and the less the oh. age, the more effect it can have on it. Oh, okay. Okay. And it talks about the like, uh, wanting to be like an allergic reaction. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh. I read in the, um, you know, the Sansino Tanakh. So there's different prints of it. At one point, they uh, Judaicized it. Originally, they had the um, Christian scholars' comments also. But um, so I read in one of the old things, I forget where it was. Maybe it's on the Pasuk, the Gama Satsira Yeshalach, that Hashem will send the, the hornet. Uh, or the, he writes over there that it's talking about the Egyptians because they had on their shields, they had a picture of a hornet. And it meant the Egyptian army that he would send them in front to help or something. And then his comment on that, on the comment, it says it's keep shop, but it's it doesn't. It's not a, it's a drush. <laughs> anyway, okay. Amar Rav Ketina, Rav Ketina says, "Kol Machnas es benoy pachs mi ben sheish ratzach ravena magiyeh." Someone puts his son in school. He's under six. Then he's gonna um, try to strengthen him. He's gonna run after him. That means run after him to strengthen him. Vayner McGee will never be able to be to strengthen him. He'll get too weak. He's, you can't, uh, you have to wait for the time to send him to school. You can't send him so young. Ikadamri, there's a different shot here, which is that his friends will run after him in Tyra and they won't catch up to him because he'll be so advanced because he's got a year, a head start. Yeah. I think today they say it's better to be the youngest in the class, the, the oldest in the class than the youngest in the class. They say like the, the uh, there's advantages to that. Here this, here it sounds like, oh, you're getting younger, it's going to be better. Yeah. The Gemara says, Ritavayu Isnu, both of them are accurate. Cholosh Tvigamer, he'll be weak, but he'll be more learned. Okay. Iba Yaseima, The, the modern shout with Khalish would be in confidence. Anyway, Ibay say Mahada Kakesh had the Bari. This concept of under six or over six and the advantage of that depends on his strength. If he's a weak child, then you have to wait till six and a uh, strong child under six. Amrabiasibarchanina, another statement. But Usha Eskino in Usha it was uh, instituted that Aisha Shemachra binikhsi Malog Bhai Bailo Mesa. 
let's say you know the, a woman has property before she gets married. So in the marriage, the husband's allowed to use that property. What's it called? Yusufruk. That he takes the pay, he takes the paris. The husband has the Kenyan paris. He acquires the products of the property, but not the Kenyan aguf. The guf, the, the, the principle of the property belongs to the wife. And the husband just has the paris from it. Well, the woman sold it. So habal maitimiyad al The husband can go to the lakuchas, to the buyer, and take it back. Because his rights to it come first. Yeah. I think it has to do with his Kenyan payers. Uh huh. Yeah, but if she sells things while she's alive, the inheritor, it must have to do with just the payers of it. Oh no, one second. After she passes away, so then you're right, it probably does have to do with the, the Dine Yerusha. Okay. Ashkechei Rab Yitzchak Bar Yosef Le Rabavo David Koi Bochlasa Deusha Rab Yitzchak Bar Yosef finds Rabavo that was in the Bochlasa is a um, a, a, congr a congregation a gathering in Usha Amalei Man Mar Deshmaita Deusha Who's the one that teaches the halachas from Usha Amalei Rab Yosef Bar Chanina Rabavo tells him it's Rab Yosef Bar Chanina Tanim Nei Arba Zimnin V'Damei Kaman Deman Chala Bekiste Okay, there's different Shut him over here what this means. Some say that he reviewed 40 times who it was. And now he has it in his pocket. That's one shot. Other shot is now that he heard who it was, he reviewed the halacha 40 times. Yeah. Okay. Now the Gemara gives us some sukkim with some drushes on it. Ashri Shemi Mishpat Isit Bakabhalis. Happy is the one, or lucky is the one that guards judgment, that does tzedakah all times. Is it possible to tzedakah at all times? You carry around a uh, an anani, a, a pauper, that you keep passing him a coin every second. So, Darsha Rabbi Seinu Shabi Yavna, the sages of Yavna, to Abramila Rabbi Eliezer, Zeh, Hazan, Banavu, Benais, and Shinktanim. This is someone that supports his children because he doesn't have a halakhic obligation to support them once they reach a certain age. And nevertheless, he supports them. So, that's doing tzedakah at all times. Especially the kids, they always, uh, I'm hungry. Every time the whole, you just finished dinner, and it's like, I want something. <laughs> Mamish Bechales. Let's keep going. Okay. Reb Shmuel Bar Nachmini, Amar Zema Gadol Yosem Yosem B'Tayich Beisim Asiyan. Reb Shmuel Bar Nachmini says, this is someone that raises an orphan, and an orphan boy, an orphan girl in his house, and then he marries them off. How, do, how is that um, continuous tzedakah? I guess because even their, 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 their life afterwards is based on his, on what he, on his raising of them, I guess. Um, a lot of wealth is in his house and his righteousness, or yeah, his, his righteousness lasts forever. Um, I guess that means that even though he's giving tzedakah, but he still has um, a lot of wealth in the house. It doesn't uh, diminish. It causes the wealth. Rav Huna and Rav Chizda. Rav Huna and Rav Chizda discussed this. This is talking about that someone that studies Torah and then he teaches it. And that means that he keeps and he gives. He keeps what he what he learned, and he also gives. He keeps uh, the Torah that he learned, even though he's still giving, but he keeps it. Chadam is a case of turn to be a machim. This is someone that writes a Tanakh, and he lends it out. I guess because it doesn't uh, um, get worn out. There's something, so that's it. He keeps the uh, it, it's his, but it's being used. Urei vanim levanecha shalom al yisrael. He, he will see 
um, sons to his son, it means grandchildren, peace unto Israel. I'm Rabbi Shobin Levi. Shobin Levi says, Kivan Shabanim Levanach Shalom Al Yisrael. Once his sons have sons, then it's going to be peace to Israel. Because then they won't have Chalitza and Yibam. Now, Chalitza, I understand. I'm not sure why Yibam is such a problem. But Shalom al Yisrael would mean, well, the lack of Shalom would be that she takes off his shoe and spits at him. But obviously, she's not going to do that because she already has children. And Chalitza is only done when there's no children. She has grandchildren, there's no Chalitza. I'm not sure how the Yibam comes in. Maybe because the Yibam was a marriage that um, that he was compelled to into. So maybe that would cause fights. But I thought they could say no. Oh, yeah. They won't come to, to uh, quarrel. Well, this is not so simple. We have to raise Yitzi. Um, the Gemara is making it look like if there's sons, then we know where the inheritance goes. It goes to the sons. It's easy. If there's no sons, then it's going to go to this uncle and that cousin, and this, it's going to go around. They're going to fight over it. It makes it look like that's the... Um, uh, the Dayani Yisrael are going to argue. Yeah, that really? I, I, I'm not sure that that's... Why would they argue? There's an, aren't there clear halachas of how it goes? I saw in the in the Quran that they have a pshat over there that there's actually a machlekes. Um, there's a, there's a, a, an argument between the Sadducees and the uh, Purushim, Purushim and Tzedukim. If a a man has a son and a daughter, and the daughter has a son, and the man passes away, now according to the rabbis, just the son inherits not the daughter. According to the Sadducees, the, the son, um, the, the, the daughter's son also inherits. And they split it equally. Because there's a male inheritor to the daughter. And so it, that was the argument. Given Shabanim Levanecha, Shalom al Yisrael, it should read the, the bit. No, it's not going to help. I don't know. The, these are people that didn't, didn't believe in the uh, in the tradition of the that the sages have. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it fits perfectly because Shabbanim Levanecha doesn't change that. Anyway. Are they pretty much like the Kutim? Or? No, well, the Kutim were a specific group of people that converted. Okay, Zem Medrash Darash Rabbi Lazar Lefnei Chachamim was right. Rabbi Lazar Ben Azaria really. This was the. Um, the teaching that Rabbi Elazar ben Azaya taught in front of the sages, which was a comparison between the way the sons inherit and the way the daughters get their sustenance from the father's estate. Just like the sons only inherit after the father passes away, so too the daughters only get their sustenance from the father's estate after he passes away. While uh, he's alive, they have to fend for themselves. Uh, as the obligation, but there's a mitzvah for him to support. Okay. Yasif Rabbi Yasef came to Rav Amnuna. Rabbi Yasef was sitting in front of Rav Amnuna. The Yasif Rav Amnuna, the Kamar, and Rav Amnuna was sitting and and uh, he said the following: Shem she'ein habanim yarshim elamen akarka. Just like the sons only inherit property, that means land, real estate. So too, the daughters, they only get their sustenance off the real estate. Well, everyone is the big commotion when he says this. Sons only inherit real estate. They don't inherit the other possessions. Is that what you're saying? Rav Yosef says to him, Maybe what you mean is the ksubas binyan dichri. That's what we mentioned about uh, um, a woman that, well, it's actually the father-in-law is giving his, his daughter um, property to, to bring into the marriage, but he doesn't want the rival wife's children to inherit that property. 
So he writes in the Ksuba that this property should end up going just to his, his daughter's children. So that's talking about just property, not, um, not other, other, not the movable objects. Amalei Mar, Mar the Gavar Rabbi says him, you're a great person, so you understood what I meant. Yeah, that's Rav Amnon tells Rabbi Yassi, you're right, that's what I meant. Somebody writes a similar condition to Suda Kay. Yeah. Yeah, well, Rashi spells out that there's one detail that needs to be in place, and that is that there has to be other property for the biblical law of inheritance to take place, because really you're, you're, the, the, what the person's doing is he's avoiding the laws of inheritance. He's, uh, he's not avoiding, he's, he's, um, he's uh, going against the laws of inheritance. The, the, he passes away, the, the father would pass away. Right, and the property would go to all the children equally, according to the Torah law of inheritance. So, if there's other items that could, that are going to be inherited, so then you can make other stipulations on on, on other properties, which that that would be acceptable. But it has to be something of the Torah inheritance that's taking place. That's a Rashi, this big Rashi. Okay, Amar Rav Chia Bar Yosef. Rav Chia Bar Yosef says. Rav Zan Mechiti Dalia. Rav gave food to someone's daughter from the wheat. Now, Dalia sounds like based on a statement that was said in the in the attic. How do they translate that over there? What do they say? Um is it Dalia that the wheat was in Dalia, or was it based on a statement of Dalia? Wait, according to according to the Aliyah. Yeah, according to the Aliyah. Aliyah. Okay. So Ibailo, the Gemara has a question. Parnasa Havya Umayaliya Miluya de Av. Are we talking about a dowry? Parnasa over here means the dowry that the to get her married. I don't know why Parnasa turns into a dowry. But um, that's what I guess you say on a bracha for Parnasa means for the death. <laughs> that means for the dowry. If someone has a girl, you give her a, 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 a give him a bracha to be able to support them in Kailo. <laughs> okay. So are we talking about the dowry, a Maya What are we talking about um, with, uh, based on the attic? Well, it doesn't mean the attic. It means me luya da'av. It means based on the, the, um, the, the, rain, the, the, the bracket, the, you know, the range of the father's wealth of what he would assume his, he would have given to his daughter for his daughter's dowry. Yeah, how much does a person spend on a wedding? Yeah, too much. But, um, but from his wealth, how much would go? Well, it's hard to say because everyone has different amounts. But the wealthier they are, the more they spend. So I think traditionally there was this thing about 10%. 10% of a person's wealth. Wow. Not to go to a wedding, to make a wedding. We have a house. It's worth $300,000. The wedding costs uh, $30,000. If it's a, uh, right? If he has a million dollar house, and it's a hundred thousand dollars the wedding. No, that's uh, <laughs> what's it mean on his home? Yeah, hey, that's what, well, that's what people do, they do it, they mortgage, the, you know, uh, it's probably not a good uh, this is not good advice. Okay, um, uh, elope. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about based on what the father would have spent on a wedding, Dhamma Shmuel. Uh, because and it follows what Shmuel says that you have to look at what the father would have spent. You're taking from the estate to marry the daughter. What would the father have spent? Or maybe what we're talking about is we're actually talking about giving sustenance to the daughter. Now, what does it mean, Aliyah? Well, it says that there was another area where the Sanhedrin would meet or where the, uh, uh, the yeshiva would meet. And that was in Aliyah. 
there were different areas, I guess, where they would sit. When, this, when they said that the daughters get their food from metal, to, that was said in Aliyah, from movable objects. As we know that the, um, got a statement before that the daughters get their food from the real estate. And this would not fit with that. This would say that the daughters get their food from the movable objects. And where was that said? That was said in the, in this upper area of the yeshiva, I guess in the, in the Vibershall or something, you know, where they would meet and discuss. Tashima. Okay, so we don't know what the answer is. We don't know when Rav fed from Naliyah, what does that mean? Does that mean that, or is it, according to the Aliyah, does it mean that he was giving the dowry? Or does it mean that he was giving food and he gives from metaltalin, gives from movable objects? So Tashma, the day the Rav Bina, in the hands of Rav Bina, Achve the Rav Chia Baraba, is the brother of Rav Chia Baraba. Chia Baraba is a big student, main, one of the main students of Rav Bina. So Rav Bina, his brother, in his hands, have a metaltalin, the Yasmin. He had... He was holding, um, I guess it was like a apotropos, a caretaker of the Yisayim, and he had this metaltalin, also kami the shmuel, movable objects. Comes in front of the shmuel, amalei, zilzun, go and use it to sustain them. My lav lemezayne. What does it mean? It must mean to, for food. Ukudu rab yitzchik bar yosef, and he's going like rab yitzchik bar yosef, which means that you can actually give sustenance to the daughters from the movable objects. The says, lie. Over there was talking about getting them their um, uh, the, the dowry. The Shmuel Atamei. And Shmuel and Shmuel's following his huh? own yeah. opinion. Um Shmuel, the Parnasa Shaman Bahav. Okay. That you follow you follow the father's position of what he would have spent. Have you of the Bernard Dai? There was a story in Nardai, the Don Dayane de Nardai, and the Don Dayane de Nardai. Have you ever been Nardai? The Don Dayane de Nardai, the Pompadisa. Let me see uh, in English. How does this work? It, likewise in Pompadisa. Oh, likewise. It occurred in Pompadisa. Okay. And there was, it doesn't tell us yet how they judged. So, don't they end up there? Pompadisa. Ba'agvi Ravchana Barbizna. And Ravchana Barbizna. Oh, the Rashi says that um, they took food from the metaltalin, from the movable object, which is not like we said on the top of the page, but that's, I guess it's following uh, what the interpretation of what Rav did is that you're allowed to use movable objects to sustain, um, you sell them off to sustain the, the daughters for food. Well, Amalu Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman says to these uh, Dayanim, Zila Haju, go and return, take back, your psak vilay, and if you don't, magbina l'chul apadnaichu minaichu. I'm going to have to pay them back, the estate back, because you weren't allowed to do that, and I'm going to take your houses away to pay back. Like the judges have to pay for a misjudgment. Well, Rabami and Rabasi several amazing metatli. Rabami and Rabasi they wanted to give sustenance from the uh, movable objects. Amar biyakib baridi milsed rabbi yechanan reish lakish. Rabbi Yechon Reish Lakish didn't know the answer to this question, and you're ready to do that? Okay. It's like advising him not to paskin on this. Rabbi Lazar, several amazing metals, and Rabbi Lazar wanted to give sustenance to the daughter from the movable objects. Amal Afan of Rabbi Shimon ben Al-Yakim. Rabbi, he says, Rabbi. Rabbi Shimon ben Al-Yakim says to Rabbi Lazar, Yedani bachshin midasadin ato. He said, I know. That, you, that you're not doing it because that's the law. Elamidas Rachmanis. It's only because you have compassion on them. So the judge sometimes is able to do things that aren't the strict law. However, but there's a problem here because maybe the students are going to think that this is the law. Someone came in front of Rav Yosef and he wants uh, uh, sustenance. 
who are the girls? It's, it should be probably hahi. No, it's hahu. Amar lahu. Rabbi Yosef said to them, Havula, give to her mitami dalbudya from the dates that are on the mat. That means it's already removed from the tree, and they're going to get sustenance off the uh, of movable objects. One second. There's an estate here. That means the father passed away. You don't collect from orphans for the balchay. If a creditor comes, you don't take the movable objects to collect from orphans. Um, now look at what you're doing. You're collecting from the movable objects for the girl, for the daughter, to, to for her sustenance. Yeah, you have the I didn't mean the movable objects that were off the tree. I meant what was on the tree, but was ready to be picked. Saif so Saif, so he says, Kalaimid Ligzais Kagasas dummy, but anything that's ready to be picked is as if it is picked. It says the trichla dikla kamina. Now I'm talking about when it still needs a little bit more on the tree. You could take that off. Um, because it still needs the tree. That's considered attached to the ground, and that's considered real estate. And that you can use that to, to sustain the, the girls. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. All right.